And this is a semi-final match. In the blue gi, Bruno Malfasini of Alliance taking on Rodney Barboza of Gata BJJ. And Malfasini, man, he's looking fired up. Look at that. I love the, the stance. I love the footwork. I think he's ready to time that guard pull because in this Roosterweight division, yeah, he actually doesn't go for the double guard pull strategy. Allows Barboza to come through and to take bottom position. So confident is he in his passing ability. Yeah, interesting when uh, when we see these poles here that are really more of like a pigeon pose stretch. <laughs> They're not really seated totally down. He has his left leg in front, which allows him to come up to his left shin if he wants to lunge forward, kind of like an ankle pick style or maybe with a front headlock, or he's able to sit back and pull right into the guard. But what it does is it makes sure that Bruno cannot shove him back onto his hip. We did see an ankle pick attempt right there, so that's exactly what we're looking at. We'll see a reset in the center. So when you're in that position, you can come right back up onto your shin or you can sit back down. But again, it prevents Bruno from shoving uh, Barboza onto his back and kind of forcing him to, um, to play this you know, seated open guard where he can be more active here on his knee. So if he has his left hand go to the ankle, there's the ankle pick opportunity that we saw a moment ago. He tried on the edge of the mat, they went out. Or with that big collar grip and tricep grip, great opportunity to sit through and get a big pull on the posture too if he chose to sit down. About 8.30 in, so we're only in a minute and a half here. Uh, a little bit of a feeling out period, but the referee is going to call some, for some penalties here. Wants to see some more action from the athletes, and rightfully so, I mean, they've been in the same position for a couple minutes, but now a big shoot up to an attempted close guard. I like the way that Barbosa has his legs around the uh, the lower legs of Malfasini, but now Malfasini's in a good spot. He is kind of far around the guard, and. Barboza is barely hanging on to the lower body there. Looks like he's got the lapel between the legs. Interesting to see Malfasini take his time adjusting that pin grip, just kind of hanging out. But now, going for a Kimura, diving down to the forearm. Yeah, we see now that uh, Malfasini put a little bit of pressure on, but he's going to have to be careful because it looks like that uh, Barboza is using more of an X style now with his legs. Yeah, and he's got the pant grip, which is very powerful as well. That's going to make it difficult for Malfasini to, to get any kind of movement going now. With the way that his, uh, with Barboza's legs are X'd here and the pant grip, Malfasini can't even really stand up. If he tries to stand up with that right leg, exactly, he's going to off balance himself. He gets put in a full single leg X position here, and now he's in trouble. But now we could see a big leg drag if Bruno is able oh, to. Oh no, look at this. This is almost exactly the same position as the, the position that Malfazzini was With stuck Tallison. in against Tallison in his earlier match. Wow. And I'm thinking, man, Bruno, he must be thinking, what the hell, how have I ended up here again? <laughs> but does he have the answer this time? Has he figured out what to do? For a moment, it seemed if he was going to start to backstep or start to hop back with his left foot, elevate the hips of Barbosa and start to look for some back entries. But now, um, I'm convinced he's looking for more of a leg drag, keeping the knees compressed. But that was a smart underhook by Barbosa to force Bruno back to his left knee, which gives him a much better angle here. And Bruno back to back stepping with that left leg, elevating the hips just like we were saying, bringing the hips up, compressing the guard. But with that lapel grip in the way, he's not going to be able to clear the top leg. So he won't be able to leg drag here to bring that knee across. So Barbosa's kind of saved... Uh, you know, have some, has some safety with that right foot because of the lapel all the way through. We do see an angle lock attempt here. There is a little bit of extension, but Bruno doesn't look phased. He would really have to uh, be able to rotate his knees to the left, just like he's trying to do now to get that angle. But Bruno standing up, putting the pressure on that right foot makes it hard to uh, really get the extension that you need on the foot. It Although doesn't we do look like he has the here. ankle wrapped up properly, though. If you look at the hand position for the, the left hand of, of Rodney Barboza, it doesn't look like this. There's a, a secure enough grip, low enough around the, the the shin and around the Achilles tendon to really create that hyperextension, like you say. 
Yeah, the way that Bruno was able to stomp his foot to the ground, adjusted the grip to free his foot. But we see some extension here too. I mean, we do see people finish the footlock from this position at times, but because of the way that Bruno is smashing the feet down, he takes away any possibility that Barbosa could push on his hips and get the extension needed. So really compressing the guard is saving him right at this moment. But still not able to go through the, to the, leg, through, to the leg drag because of that lapel saving Barbosa's foot from being dragged all the way across. And not for lack of trying, I mean, Bruno. Oh, look at this nice total attempt. attempt. I, that's more, I think, just to try and open. Unlock the position. Yeah, the, the, this position here. Now we see Barbosa actually movement. trying to unbalance Malfasini, and he wants to reset his grips. He wants to try and attack for that ankle lock, but Malfasini is straight back onto his feet, and we are past the halfway mark in this match. Yeah, I'm really impressed with Barbosa uh, with the. Malvasini's ability to continue to come up on top, even after being knocked down, because his right shoulder is being tilted down by that lapel grip, and so it's, it's very hard to keep your posture when that lapel is yanking on you this way, all the weight down, um, and you're anchored into both legs. So I think very, very smart here. Interesting, he's, so he's been in this match now, or in this position now, two matches in a row, and it seems he's experimenting with some new options, right? He didn't want to get stuck again, so grabbing down for the collar, going for that little toe hold that we saw, but now a better ankle for Arbosa on the Hard foot. Hard to see if this actually has the ankle grip here. Can't quite see from this angle. Now we see Malfasini trying to come up on top. It this looks like the ankle is now. wrapped. But once again, is it really a submission threat? I don't believe it is. It's more of a control position. So and if it, anything, Barboza, his right leg is actually stuck now by the fact that he tried to use that lapel as a control position, and Malfasini is actually in a great position from which to put the smash on. Yeah, so right now what we saw is, is Barboza. But, I see that. Barboza manages to, oh, it's, it, this is Malfasini now, putting the pressure on. Yeah, but we, so the, the lapel uh, saved him from the leg being dragged across, but then it was to the de to his detriment because once the leg did get dragged across and, and uh, Malfasini was able to bring it over, it locked it into the leg, drag in place. Now we see a uh, big arm triangle grip, the head and arm together, putting a lot of pressure down with the right shoulder. So from this position, what, what Bruno's looking to do is he's gonna try to sprawl his right hip down to free his leg, which will eventually lead to the pass on the left side. He can also use his head here to drive the tricep up and force Barboza's head and arm together again the way he had it a moment ago. With the threat of the choke, it creates a much better possibility to start to free that right leg as your opponent is forced to defend the choke rather than just focusing on retaining the guard. This, this position, man, Ronnie Barboza really doesn't have a lot of options here. He is in a, uh, in a really difficult position because if he opens this this lock around the legs, then Bruno Malfasini will pass. His right arm as high up the head as it is, the threat of the arm triangle choke is there, but Malfasini can just cruise now in this, in this position. It's not a scoring position, but Barboza is in a very, very bad spot. Yeah, and, and Barbosa just does oh, a great I'm job of bringing, bringing that left foot back in onto the hip just to create enough distance and pressure to reset the guard. And Bruno looking to clear that 50-50. He's trying to, to unlock the figure four of Barboza and swing the leg across to maybe step out. And another little toe hold attempt here, I think, to try to unlock the 50-50. Well, it's, it's not the 50-50, right? It's the, they call it, they call it the unfair 50-50. Well, yeah, the unfair 50 the, Yeah, the, the leg is passed across. So it's uh, the moment that, that Malfasini is able to come forward nice as he's doing now here. with like a cross-collar choke. This is, this is good work from Alfasini, and he's just throwing up attacks now from this position. I think the frustration, once again, clear. He doesn't like getting caught in these positions, and I think that his opponents have realized that, hey, if we're able to tie him up, Stop if him. we're able to slow him down, then we have a chance at surviving. But I really love Bruno's insistence on continuing to push the match forward and continuing to attack over and over and over. He doesn't want to be stuck in this position where they're just going to hang out and Nobody you know does. look for the advantage. and. Uh, and so I really, really love, like, throw in the toe holds, throw in the cross collar. We see a little bit more of a realistic ankle lock attack here. Bruno's being forced to adjust a little bit, but will it be enough oh, for look at that, though. the toe hold? I thought that Barboza was going to come up on top there, use it as a sweep attack. But Bruno has to be careful here not to end up on the bottom position. He's going to give up the two points. He is. He is indeed. 
But now in on an ankle lock too, twisting through. No points through. on board yet. Just an advantage for Bruno Malfasini for what looked like the, oh, there is the two points. So it was an advantage for Malfasini's leg lock attack. come back up on attack. top. And now that he has the advantage, if he does come up on top, he's going to be winning with 30 seconds left. But he needs to come up and assume top position before that can happen. Big extension here by Barbosa's legs to try to keep him at bay. He's just trying to keep Bruno down now. But Bruno there comes up on top, scores two back. So 20 seconds. pretty much even. But that one advantage that Malfasini scored for the toe hold, and I feel that he's just going to ride out the clock now. This last 10 seconds of the match. And that will put... Bruno Malfasini into the final here of the Roosterweight division. And no opportunity to win another gold medal for the Alliance veteran. And you'll face the winner of the opposite side semi-final, which is taking place right now on that one. The winner of Mikey Musmichi versus Jonas Andraj. We have the referees calling for a penalty towards Barbosa, which will give an advantage to Malfasini due to the talking, I think, and the complaining about the rules or the arguing with the referee. I think he disagreed with the advantage given yeah, to points at this point. Yeah, <laughs> when you've already lost, you've lost, but. Really, really enjoyed his pace setting and uh, his insistence to keep the match moving forward. Take a look at some of the best moments from that match in just a moment. So bring the replay up. It was that initial from that guard pole position that uh, only Barboza was able to catch Malfasini and stop him from jumping over the top of the guard. Came close to getting underneath Malfasini a number of times, especially with that ankle lock control, but wasn't able to off balance him sufficiently to come up on top or to really attack for a solid ankle lock. And it really was a case of hanging on. But this was the moment that, with that one advantage already on the board for the ankle lock, or excuse me, the toe hold attempt that Malfasini got scored on, but was able to come back on top, score his own two. Back more, just a second. <laughs> 